So I want to talk about this MK Ultra project that I have here. This was at Georgetown University. I'll show you guys the article here it's from 1977. This will give you an idea of what they were doing way back in the 50s and 60s. Now, and I want to read this to you guys so you'll understand what they were doing then. And it could give you an idea of what they possibly could be doing now. Or it, it would basically can't be surprised by, by uh, what, what we're seeing now when you know what they were doing then. So let me pull this up here. Okay, three area colleges used by CIA in behavior testing by Bill Richards and John Jacobs. The Central Intelligence Agency used the University of Maryland and George Washington University for some of its top secret MK Ultra experiments in behavior control in the 1950s and the 1960s. The agency has informed both universities. Now, um, these weren't the only schools, of course. There's been many, many, many schools. I think over a hundred different universities were used for the MK Ultra projects. But Georgetown was one that had a, um, some pretty significant ones. Massachusetts uh, as well, Michigan State, uh, UC Berkeley, UCLA, Stanford, Harvard, uh, St. Uh, John Hopkins. I mean, many, many schools. But anyways, let's continue. The CIA also officially informed Georgetown University that it had sheltered some of the MKUltra experiments. Georgetown's part in the project had been previously reported but not officially confirmed. The three local universities were among 80 private and public institutions told in the past few days that they had played parts, some wittingly, some not, in the MKUltra tests. In a related development, the CIA yesterday made public under the Freedom of Information Act an additional 1,760 pages of documents pertaining to MKUltra behavior control experiments. These documents show that many high-ranking agency officials knew and approved at least the Georgetown part of the mind control program, including then CIA Director Alan Dulles and senior aides Richard M. Bissell, Jr. C.P. Cabell, Lyman Kirkpatrick, Lawrence Houston, and Richard Helms. Helms later became CIA Director. The documents show that among things tested at Georgetown were substances to promote illogical thinking and impulsiveness to the point where the recipient would be discredited in public and substances to promote and prevent the intoxicating effect of alcohol. The documents released yesterday say one purpose of the Georgetown research was defense against drugs and chemical techniques used in interrogation and brainwashing. It has already been reported that the CIA gave the university $375,000 toward a construction of a new medical wing which the agency hoped to use for its experiments. The money was funneled through the, the Gisector Fund for Medical Research, a CIA front named for Dr. Joseph F. Gisector, a prominent Washington pathologist and cancer researcher who taught at Georgetown. I'm sure I totally butchered that name. Anyhow, let's continue. Uh, a Georgetown spokesman said yesterday that the university still has found no evidence that the research the CIA envisioned was ever conducted there. He said the university has been trying to meet with Jessica, but has been unable to contact him. And he has been subpoenaed to testify September 9th before a Senate su subcommittee investigating the MKUltra program. Now, um, this, I, I, I'm sure everything we read about the MKUltra, especially articles put in, in media outlets, are not complete. They're not thorough they're probably omitting a lot of things some things are probably falsified but it's still interesting to read what they did release and a lot of the the uh, there's still a lot of, of white papers that you you can you can locate they've actually released quite a bit and of course we know there's plenty more but even the little bit they release it's just fascinating reading about what types of drugs they were testing and what type of drugs they they aimed to create especially at this time this is back in the 50s and 60s i mean you think about all the weird stuff we see with the celebrities and how they just you know act really strange out of nowhere it really lines up with a lot of these drugs they were they were testing way way back then so i can, I can only imagine what level of psychotropics that they have today I mean, they could probably get people to do just about anything through drug manipulation in the brain. It's something to think about. We can never really get to the bottom of it. 
but we definitely can acquire enough evidence to, to get a pretty good idea that something something is definitely um, fishy about this. There, there has to be some connection with these things. Now, a long description of the proposed Georgetown facility suggested that human patients and volunteers would be available for experimental purposes. It said the agency could recruit new scientific personnel at the medical center because agents working under the undercover there would be in a daily contact with the graduate school. The identity of the school was censored in the documents. To further its interest in producing stress through chemical means, the CIA also proposed studying chemical agents on advanced cancer patients. Uh, these means included a K or knockout drug. Another MK Ultra project sought to understand toxic delirium uremic coma and cerebral toxicity from poisoning. Toward that end, chemical compounds were administered to cancer patients and to at least four diabetic patients with plans for more tests to study the effect on mental function of large doses of the compound. Several of the cancer patients on the compound, one document said, have complained of mental fogging, which is accompanied by complete relief from a pain on high dosage. This mental fogging, of course, is not experienced by diabetics. It could not be learned from the documents whether these patients knew they were being tested. So this sounds like the Tuskegee experiment, you know, where they're, they're taking patients and without them knowing, they're testing different types of drugs on them. It's, I mean, it's not surprising because this, the CIA has been known for these types of things. The American government in general has been known for, for testing drugs and, and disease on innocent people. So, anyhow, let's continue. Other CIA records from MKUltra, which were released yesterday, show that in one project, agents anonymously donated $1,000 to an unidentified university for human experiments using the drug Maritran, Serpentine, Chloropromase, and Bulcopene. According to medical references, uh, Meritin acts as a nervous system stimulant like an amphetamine. Serpentine is an antihypertensive medication. Chlorpromese is a depressant with the trade name Thorazine. Bulbacognine produces a state of suspended animation and can cause schizophrenia. Wow, like, wow, wow, so that was crazy. The CIA documents note that the 1954 experiments were further financed by the clinic where they were conducted and were initiated by the agency security office. 1954, they were researching these types of drugs. Wow. Uh, the MK Ultra program, according to the CIA's notifications to the institutions, was developed to identify material and methods useful in altering human behavior patterns. Let's read that again. The MK Ultra program, according to the CIA notifications to the institutions, institutions, of course, Tavistock is one of those main institutions that they would pretty much um, coordinate with, and also uh, Stanford, uh, the research institute there as well, was developed to identify material and methods useful in altering human behavior patterns. That's mind control. And of course, we understand that's what MK stands for, but it's it's very clear that they were testing these drugs to control behavior. And if they were doing this way back in 1954, why wouldn't these same drugs that we're being promoted and we're being, uh, you know, uh, influenced to involve ourselves with, why wouldn't these be part of similar projects? Because those were the same drugs they were studying as well. MK Ultra was all about LSD, all about psilocybin. Gordon Wasson, they sent to study psilocybin. Timothy Leary and uh, Hoffman and um, Albert, Albert Hoffman, Leary, and a couple other guys they sent for the LSD. Wasson was, was on the... Uh, psilocybin mushrooms they also study mescaline huxley was involved with the mescaline studies we had all of these these individuals studying these different drugs way back in 1953 that's when it really kicked off in 1953 i covered all of this in my media generations documentary so it's interesting how all of those same drugs are being brought back to us today in 2019 and they're being promoted in a way that's telling us, hey, look, we're figuring out that these drugs might have some positive effect on your depression or your anxiety. It's like um, they know exactly what these drugs can do. They've been studying these drugs since 1953.
they haven't discovered anything new. They think people don't know history. They think people don't actually do a little research. The things that they're telling us in these articles are no different from what you can read in Timothy Leary's studies. To me, it's clear this is just a re-education, a, a new MK Ultra program for the new generation. The program flourished into a multi-million dollar project through the Cold War of the 1950s and into the mid-60s. The newly released MKUltra records are part of thousands of pages of financial documents the CIA says it only recently discovered. More complete records of the mind control experiments were destroyed, of course, in 1973 by the CIA Technical Services Director Sidney Gottlieb, allegedly on verbal instructions from the CIA Director Helms. And they claim that that's when the MKUltra project ended, when the documents were destroyed in 1973. But we know that is not true at all, <laughs> because we see the same methods that they had been using continue throughout the 60s and especially into the 70s. And from the 70s into the 80s and today, we're seeing the same drugs being promoted to the newer, younger generations in the same kind of way. It seems like a mass dosing to me.